Well, tuna. Yes, they do. Yeah. Let's move on to the next wine. I mean, that was incredible. I'm, I'm just not scoring out of, like, I'm just out of respect, I think. Um, this is a wine that a lot of people are familiar from uh, with you at the Bergerie, the 2005. Um, now, it's a separate Appellation, right? Separate yeah, upper Appellation Seven Year, yeah. Now, right here, the Roche, now, what is, what is, for them out there, what is that part of the Seven Year? It's a small part. Uh, there are three people owning some Rochemont, and it's all together less than. So you're there acres. in Rochemont. Who else is there? Uh, you have. Do you, do you now, remember? Who, who, you have, like one, one guy called Soulez who just sold his estate. Okay. Let's and, some and, and you have a third person. So some uh, random dude. So I mean, but it's so it's listen. It's seventy acres. It's tiny. I understand. And how much of it do you have? Oh, not 68? much. Sixty-eight. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, I have uh, five. How big? Yeah, how big is Sauvignon? No, five acres. I have twelve acres. Sorry. How big is Sauvignon in its entirety? Tiny, about three hundred hectares, so not much. Right. Maybe eight hundred acres, maybe. Right. No, it's small. It's small. It's a small appellation. Who, who do you appreciate of your neighbors? Who do you feel is really doing good? Uh, you have now some people coming fairly well. Young. You see, the problem is that formerly you had maybe eight owners. Right. And many outsiders came and bought two hectares, one right. hectare, etc. So I don't even know these characters anymore. Well, it it depends who is coming. You have you know, the young generation is working well. Yeah. You know the young generation they don't look at competition and all these silly things. They just say, okay, I'm here. I'm doing Maybe my best, yeah. and this makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know this notion of marketing is for the young people is a bit useless, and I love that actually mm -hmm. <laughs> because. Because they say, okay, that's my wine, you know, and, and same for me. I would never describe a wine that a professional describe a wine I respect. But if I come and I say, okay, look and look at the minerality and look how good it is and look at the hint of it. When you introduce your wife to someone, you don't say, okay, look at the size of the front hand and look at the mm, color of the, you do some it. people, <laughs> not me. <laughs> but I mean, a wine is a wine and, and, and you want to treat, you want to treat wine Almost, I, I kind of am feeling, I knew I was going to like you. I feel like I treat wine like a human being. Yes, absolutely. And It's I, a living entity, let's put it like this. I feel like I want to know its personality. It, it, that's the thing. Sometimes, I, I once, an episode, 200, 300 episodes said, this wine is loaded with charisma. And I got yeah, like that five, is a good point. Got, very well, very, got very five, well said. I got five or six emails from people that were angry at me. No, that's What the heck does that mean? True. Your show is bull crap. No. You know, no, that's a very good statement. That's a very good statement. I, I just have it's exactly only, what it should be. I've always yeah. felt that people should be empowered to explain wine the way they want to explain it instead of the 45 definitions that are out there. That is true. You see, also, too much analogy kills wine. Because if you need to reach analogy, if you need to reach a step of surgical, aesthetical surgery, I mean, you, you have lost the natural beauty. And 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 uh, normally, if you have vine, you shouldn't plant vines anywhere. Now the world is getting a bit crazy, and plant <laughs> vines where you should have cactus sometimes. <laughs> but but no Jersey. <laughs> but if the wine is in a good spot, if the farming is good, frankly, once the crop is done, your job is almost achieved. Tell me about this. This almost has like an evergreen pine needle kind of, you know leafy kind of component. It's spearmint and kind of, you know, it's very green, almost green-esque yes. for me. A little more smoky than the other. You're picking up smoke? I'm not getting as much not you know? smoke, but uh, it's difficult to put words, actually. <laughs> well, how would you describe this wine without, you know, how would you describe this wine? I would describe this wine... Angry? No. I would describe Subtle? this wine as a strong personality. An artist with a strong personality. An artist with a strong personality. Yeah. Like you. So who, who like would you. tell you? Like you. <laughs> who knows? Uh, <laughs> who would tell you, would tell you, come on, don't disturb me now. At that time of the day, I'm reading my newspaper. <laughs> this wine is extremely nutty on the back end. Yes. Like walnuts. More tensed and... and, and Wow, this is Longer. absurdly, absurdly nutty. Yeah, it's yeah. I it's, feel like I ate an acorn, an almond, and a walnut. 
A bit, yes. You're right, because when you say that, it means that you are already with the seed inside. You know, mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. yeah. That's really what it is. The later you harvest, the more you have the forces which were going inside the seed which are there. You see, keep in mind that in the seed you have the plant. You see, a, a plant is disappearing into its seed. So oh, the I later like you one. harvest, the more you, you are... You are going inside, in world. Oh man, this is, I mean, it, I get so much nuttiness in this. I have very little bottles available. <laughs> I, I, he's getting worried that I want to buy them. <laughs> no, 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 but I love the wine, but I mean, I What mean, is the suggested retail of that? Uh, 50 to 55. 50 to 55, yeah. I mean, this is an incredible yeah. bottle of wine. I mean, yeah. you know, I said I wasn't going to score, but this is in a 93, 94 point range for my palate. I mean, first of all, it starts off extremely you know, evergreeny and spearminty. It means it's got a green kind of thing going on. And then I don't think I've ever in my entire life had a wine that tasted so much like walnuts. I mean, mm -hmm. just, I, I get so much of it. And it, yeah, and almost like kasha. I was born in Belarus, in the uh, former Soviet Union. Uh -huh. And grandma used to make this kasha. Uh -huh, and yes. then she'd put walnuts in it. And it tastes exactly yes. like this. It's a good comparison, yes. I like it. Yes. I like yes. it a lot. Yeah. I might drink it directly out of the decanter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> please. Nico, you should tell the story about biodynamic wine versus regularly made wine and the ability of people to drink a whole glass of biodynamic wine. Yeah, that's a test. I don't know if you, if you could say that. But Come on, zoom into this guy over here. He's <laughs> over here like, he's like the puppet master. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, yeah. No, no, it's a good point. It's, it's my importer in Italy, Luca Gagano, the company is called Vellier, and he has the widest range of biodynamic wines in the world. Now, that's what, his portfolio? Yeah, that's his portfolio. What it does to, to tell to wine waiter and sommelier, uh, uh, yeah, uh, have a test. He buys a very well-known bottle of wine, non-organic, non-biodynamic, of a very well-known part of France, which sure. I'm not going to mention. Oh, no. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and he fills a glass with it. And then he fills a glass with any biodynamic wines. And he said now to the wine waiter, okay, take that glass, empty it, and don't stop. If it's a biodynamic wine, you can do it because it goes through very easily. If it's a wine done in a modern way, People have to stop and breathe. Are you saying modern wine is choking the consumer? It's shocking your body. It's choking your body? Yes, absolutely. Make the test. Well, I think I have to cancel the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh I, <laughs> well, I'm saying that make the test with someone uh, in another show, you know. Yep. Full the and say, you, when you take four or five, swallow four or five times, if it's not tuned to yourself, if the energies are not really linked to yourself, you have to stop to adapt yourself. And if it's a wine which is made through nature, well, also made through nature, it just goes through. It's a very interesting test. Now, don't drive afterwards. I understand. <laughs> Let's get into this wine right here. Now, this is the uh, 2004 Coulé de Sarant. Uh, and what is the suggested retail of this? It's around 70 75 $70, $75. Um, Big bucks, but you know, on the nose, it's just incredible. Well, we have to tell that cool it's bell pepper. On the, I get like yes, a, a pet, true. right? Yeah, it could on the be nose. that. Yeah, has its own appellation controlée. So we yeah, have so three in France that for everybody. Coulé de Saron is its own appellation, kind yeah. of like, kind of like. Uh, uh, like Romanée Conti yeah, and just, like yeah, like sure. Chateau Grier, we are three or four in France to have it. It's seven hectares. It exists since more than eight centuries. So it's about fifteen acres. Centuries. It's about twelve acres. Twelve acres. That's yeah. it. Yes. And uh, so the, it's done and let's by hand. Here. I'm sorry to jump in here, but like like Romani Conti, Romani Conti, La Claude de Lambre in Burgundy. This is an appellation within itself, and this is the only only producer. Yes, we, we are the only like owners yep, of that appellation. So you yeah. have to understand, this is a very huge rarity. Are you saying it is only three within all of France? Yes, we I have three was... people, maybe five. Uh, yeah, I thought there was a couple. I'm trying to think. Yeah, a couple more. more. Chateau Grillet yeah. is one. Yeah. Yes, Chateau yes, Grillet yes, is yes. one. Yes. Yep. And, 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 and maybe another one, I don't know. But, I mean, I know it's it's very old vines. It's, uh, Are you proud of that? Is that a sense of interest for I'm you? I'm not I mean, it's kind proud of... because, I tell you, I will have spent 40 years or 30 years of my life there, and, and this is the 876 harvest. 
So it's tiny, it's only 5%. From that point of view, I have the impression that I'm responsible and just passing by and another one yeah. will come behind. That's right. So proudness is nothing. I'm just impressed. You see, you're, you're too flattered. many walls. You're flattered to be able flattered, to maybe. watch over it. I, am, a sense of I would say more happy, happy to be there. I think it's a satisfaction, sure, more than than something else. But, but uh, two main battles: Sorry. English against France, uh -huh. and Catholic against Protestant. That was twelfth century, thirteenth century, and then Catholic against Protestant in the seventeenth century. It's it's a very old place, but I I think the wine has a balance which is extraordinary. One thing I'm noticing on your wine: mm. you're, you're spilling all over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's, laughs> <laughs> um, I think it got mad at you for not saying that happy wasn't good enough. They wanted you to say humbled, and I think the wine attacked you right there. Maybe you're right. Um, you better keep that in mind. <laughs> um, I think I am humble. Honestly, uh, I don't think I'm proud. No, I believe you. No, I, I think no. you're extremely humble. I mean, I, no, I, 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 I mean, I mean, you can't imagine. I mean, I wish you knew how excited I was that you were coming mm, to do this show. Yeah, thank you. No, I really, you no, know, I'm I mean, just a member of a system which belongs to a place which is Coulettesero, that's all. And I'm trying to do my best. I take myself for a conductor. Mm -hmm. You see, when you, you have love a nice, music, huh? What? Yes. Well, I compare always wine and music. I think how, it's very close one about, to another. How about American football? Ah. Well, you could like American football and be a wine grower, but for me, you see, this is notes of music being put together with harmony by a force that I do not control, but that I am trying to help. That's what it is. Nature assistant. Yeah, nature assistant. Talk to me about the acid. I think the acid ah, across the bo board on these wines is extremely present. Um, to me, it's the backbone of these three wines right well now. Well done, well done. Well, thank you. I mean, you know. Uh, no, no, because you see, on the chenin, something. on the chenin, the key point is the acidity. When yeah. I said it was a difficult child, if you haven't got the system which permit to the acidity to be well balanced as a component of something which is broader than that, you have not got a chenin. And when you touch in the cellar the acidity of a chenin, you destroy the global image. So the acidity is a key on a chenin. And, and uh, I always take the, the, the example of an impressionist painting. You may have a bright red flower and the red is shocking. If I show you only that flower, you say it's ugly. If you put that flower in the global painting, you say that's fabulous. So acidity should be swallowed by all the rest and you can achieve this well only through bi biodynamics. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. it's, it's an harmony. And a lot of chenin are achieved through analogy, heating. Sometime on this wine, you have no malolactic fermentation. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't come, it means that it shouldn't come. And I'm not going to force it. You see? How many times has that happened to you? Oh, quite often. Maybe one vintage out of three. Mm -hmm. I think two or four had very little malolactic. Mm -hmm. But you see, this idea, these brains, our world is dying from too much brain, you know, too much the cleverness. Is, right. That cold cleverness which kill common sense. You know, that's really what it is. And, 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 and uh, if you let nature, nature knows if the melanactic should be done. Nature got not. us here. Yeah, of course. But we weren't around to tell <laughs> nature what to do. Nature we, does what it wants to do. Absolutely, and knows what to do. So the only thing we can do is to make sure that we don't disturb screw nature. Don't That's screw it, it up. Don't screw up nature. Yeah, tell, me, tell me, you know, who you feel around the world have been... Uh, you know, supporters. When you look back at your career now, it's very trendy. You know, I'm doing yeah. three shows in a row. Actually, there's probably a two-parter. This whole week's going to be biodynamic on Wine Library TV. You know, it's all trendy. Tell me who, you know, in the early days, you know, in 80, yeah. who said you weren't a clown? Who was out there? Who's around today? Who oh, deserves we, a couple shout-outs? We were clowns, of course, <laughs> for many appellations, for many economic concerns. When you work in biodynamic, you are not by but on a lot. global scale, was it was Hugh Johnson? Was 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 anybody? Mark Spurrier was. Hugh there? Johnson did not really understood what it was about, but, but, but. Uh, How about I, Parker in his early career? He was just starting his early career then. 
I think these guys are accustomed, too much accustomed to wine which are made through intense energy. Mm -hmm. So they have lost the understanding of that the what nature can do. Who uh, hasn't lost it, in your opinion? And it doesn't necessarily have to be pressed. Maybe it's another winemaker. No, I tell you, I'm just you curious. bring that point and I, I, and I give you a, <laughs> a clear answer. I think often, not always, but often, the press didn't play the part that it should play because it's depending on advertising budget, full stop. Business. Business. And business has been killing part of the wine and the press. You, when you were talking of a guy like Frank Pryor on the New York Times, right. that guy could tell whatever he wish. Asimov is a, almost similar to that. Eric's a good guy. Yeah, And he's, he's a, a New York guy. Jets fan. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yes, he no, he definitely is. Okay. Which okay. is a huge thing for okay. me. That's why okay. I read his column. Okay, right. okay. Um, but but from other people, you have you see, other people would say biodynamic is on the way, etc. But they will not explain that a wine in biodynamic is a well, true they're, taste. They're, they're talking about it now. What I was curious about, and I think what the fans out there would be watching are curious about is, who in 1984 said yes? Was there anybody? Oh, I mean, no, I tell you, I started in 80. Yep. We were probably five or six in Europe. Yep. Stefano Bellotti in Italy, okay. Christine Sachs in Austria, Frick in Alsace, Francois Boucher not so far away from me and he helped me. Uh, and who else? Maybe another that I'm forgetting. And then the first... Did everybody think you guys were like witch doctors? Absolutely. Absolutely. Entirely. My parents received moon. phone call from the from the, the cooperative saying you, you gave your beautiful vineyard to your son. He's Who's destroying everything. Yeah. Yeah, so many Did people try to arrest you? Not yet. Not at that stage. But <laughs> we yet. were crazy. No, but not so far No, I, I mean it. I mean, people were like the moon and animal yeah. skull. And what the heck is this? Well, then... That's also one of the reasons why I made this group, because when you are 180 were, to do scared, it, right? you know, you say... But <laughs> the first woman who came on was La Lubis. La Lubis came in the late 80s. That was said, a big deal. Yeah, that was, was a big, a big deal. deal. Then Anne-Claude Lefebvre came at the very end of the 80s or beginning of the 90s. And it just started. And then it started. Right. Yeah. And, and finally, all these people... You see, people, very often people don't come to be a dynamic for philosophical reasons. They come and because they have, been, well, no, they have been tasting the wine. And well, how, how about you know what Anne-Claude did? Anne-Claude, Anne 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 what she did, it's very simple. She had one hectare in be a dynamic, one hectare or more organic, I can't remember. She tasted and, it? And she, and she said, okay, no, not only she tasted. For one year, all the visitors had to taste bottle one, bottle two. And everybody went there. And 90% were on the side of be a dynamics you share moving to and be that's a dynamics it. that's it ha, but uh, some people come at a necessity their vineyards are dying they're struggling yes. and 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 there's now more vineyard managers out there saying listen you've got to farm more properly yes we have reached that and modern farming is showing all the side effects of what it is sure. so that's all the damage oh yes it's kind of like the steroids era in baseball yes you know, in, unfortunately, in the next 10 to 20 years, a lot of our favorite athletes are probably going to pass yeah, at 51, true. at 54. Yeah. At, you know, it's going to be a... I'm, listen, I'm not looking forward you're, to it. No, you're that. right. I'm, it's I'm, not a bad example at all. And you're so, right. you know, at some right. level, we're seeing that in the wine industry. I agree. I agree. Everywhere. You see it in finance. Come on. <laughs> we see it in finance. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. You're, absolutely. You're right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. absolutely. But, but uh, I think the consumer... You know, women women are maybe more sensible than men. You know, we are. Definitely. And when they take, I've seen women not knowing well wine. They taste a glass of biodynamic wine and say, oh, it's funny, that wine makes me sound good. And that makes the man happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola, okay. let me ask you a question. Um, what about where you see things going. I mean, what is your vision? I mean, in, are you, in the are wine, you, for the wine, in the wine field or every, wine, everywhere? Well, well, listen, you want to go everywhere, knock yourself out. I'm interested in hearing what you've got to say. But in general, I mean, are you, are you excited? I mean, it's clearly, I mean, almost everybody who's watching this right now, yeah. 80,000 people yeah. know about biodynamic wine yes. making or have heard it. It's on their radar. That is impossible to say 10 years ago. And, no, that is and, true. And laughable yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you must, feel, you must feel an enormous sense of excitement, happiness, um, you know, pleasure. I would say release. Relief. I would relief? Have, relief. I would have been extremely upset to die, and that comes one day, and I'm, I think it's fine. Uh, Are you happy about that? 
Well, it's just a chance. Come on, energy doesn't die. Sure. Just a mutation. Do you feel like this is a big part of your legacy and this offers a real opportunity? I think at least I have the feeling that I've done something. And I tell you, I spend most of my time now teaching young people. And when you see all over the world, it could be Russia, it could be Tokyo, it could be South America, etc. When you see young people in front of you having a lust to understand what, are the, what is the knowledge about energy behind matter, how you can use it, biodynamic, dynamism of life. So it's completely different laws that you have to find and just use them. Like acupuncture, I put a needle here and maybe you feel something on your feet. Acupuncture is crazy. But, but interesting. Very. Very interesting. So, I mean, biodynamic is the same. You put things, things, things here, and suddenly life you bury, come on your estate. You bury an, a horn here, and it means something. Uh, well, you take that, and you, and you spread it on the soil at specific time. But basically, it's just stimulating process of life. So we move toward an understanding that behind matter, you have energies, and that these laws, which are not taught to young people, can be used for free. Don't pay for it. It's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, nature is free. You don't have a chicken telling you, I've been bringing <laughs> you this week six eggs. That's my bill. <laughs> nature is a donation. It's fabulous. So, you know, Nicole, and, this, you. Sorry, and this is disturbing. And this is disturbing. A huge market of assistance to farming. And that's why they were fighting so much biodynamics. Because you were killing their market. Let me ask you a question. Yeah? What do you think about the internet? Ah, that's a difficult question. Internet is certainly a way to cope with a lack, let's put it that way, a lack of information which is given to people. From that point of view, it is fabulous. Where I am a little bit disturbed is that when you understand that life on Earth is pure informatic, it's just masses of frequencies and wavelengths which reach the Earth. The Earth without the solar system would be a dead body. Sure. Okay, so if you have too many satellites turning around and sending all their wavelengths and frequencies which doesn't fit the system which provide life on Earth, then you disturb the information of life on Earth. So we shouldn't push it too far. Mm -hmm. but, but I think when you see that, look, that crisis which came, I saw it 10 years ago. When you were telling people, come on, the financial world is being crazy, they took you for a nut. Sure. Now it is there. It's all balance. It's all balance. And, yeah. Let me ask you a question. People who are watching right now, yeah. can they come and visit you? Yes, it's open from Monday to Saturday. And how, I, and I'm how, not how, receiving how everyone, but there is a system to get everyone And how, how often are you there? Uh, I tell you, from May to the harvest. I'm almost there full time because... May to if, October. Yeah, because if you want to cope with disease, you need to be there. I treat disease with a lot of tea of plants, which I get in the mountains, with milk. I mean, the Australian came up with a study saying that oidium, which is a main disease for, for, for vines, could be coped with milk. Who took it? Milk is too cheap. They want to sell you a bloody thing which costs a fortune. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, it's true. Get pumped. Yeah. So, so I mean, I'm there, but my daughter is also there full time, and we have, we have a system to receive people. But I'm a small company. Don't think you come in a huge thing. Oh, I want know? like ten thousand people to show up on the same day. Is that okay? <laughs> like, this is yes. Been, let's this been, let's do it together. <laughs> <laughs> this has been unbelievable. No, it's I've great. really enjoyed this. Yeah. You get to ask them the question of the day. Ah, the question of the day. Please make sure that every day you... No, 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 be careful. Okay. You said, please make sure. That sounds like you're making the statement of the day. Okay, so... What I want you to do is ask question. them a question, and they'll answer, and I'll send you the email with the answers. Are you happy with the wines you drink? It's a pretty profound question, actually. I like yeah. that. Thank yeah. you so okay, much. Okay, thank you very a much. A real honor. No, no, great. I was very happy you, to be there. You, with a whole lot of him, you're changing the wine world.